Hello everyone and welcome to the lesson. Today we are practicing exam tasks. It means we are doing reading, listening, writing and uh, speaking. So the first task we are going to work at today is reading. You have got a text caught in the act. Let's read the text and try to understand the main plot. Don't translate the whole text. So, reading. Even if you are looking carefully, you might miss it. It's only a stray strand of hair, after all. But, to me, as a forensic scientist, this is what I live for. This is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. This microscopic human trace might be the one vital piece of evidence that leads to the arrest and imprisonment of the criminal. There are who, without releasing it, left his calling cut behind at the scene of the crime. One single strand of hair contains all the criminal's DNA and, once matched, can lead all the way back to his door. And that is my job. I am a forensic scientist. Forensic just means relating to the legal system. And I collect and analyze evidence that is then used to catch a whole range of criminals committing any number of illegal acts. A member of the public might jump to the conclusion that all I work of are on are murders, but my field on, of investigation includes burglaries, arson, simple cases of forgery or more advanced internet offenses. Since time began, criminals have always found new ways of breaking the law, but I have complete faith in my subject. It doesn't matter what the crime is, science will get to the bottom of it, and as technology continues to improve, the chances of getting away with it become slimmer and slimmer. Perhaps the most famous forensic scientist of all was Sherlock Holmes. His methods of investigation, popularized in numerous books, films and television series, included close observation, rigorous examination of evidence and logical deduction. This is where I got my inspiration from. Reading the stories and watching the films fascinated me when I was Yana, and they still do today. I took all available science courses at school and then moved on to criminology at university. After graduating at the top of my class, it was then a small step to the police, and I am now head of the forensic investigation department. In many ways, the job hasn't changed all that much from the fog-filled streets of Holmes, London. The most useful tool for any scientist is still a keen mind, a good eye that connects the apparently unconnected and a skillful reading of the evidence. A crime scene is not that differ different to a story. It is a narrative with a beginning in which the criminal events enters the house, a middle when the crime is committed, and the climax as the criminal leaves the crime scene. My job is to make sure that the ultimate end is the capture of the villain. Of course, there is a new style of fictionalized forensic on television nowadays that uses the most cutting-edge technology available and suddenly the job is the focus of a huge amount of attention 
with relevant university courses filling up faster than ever before. But don't be fooled by what you see on television. The job is vastly different from the one seemingly done by the heroes of a weekly TV shows. First of all, the forensic scientist isn't the first one at the scene of the crime. We are usually there much later. Also, forensics can be a time-consuming and lengthy procedure. TV takes one hour to solve the crime. We can take weeks, months, even years. DNA analysis takes a long time, no matter how technologically advanced we are. But having said all that, the basic methods are, we use are the same as our TV counterparts. Take fingerprints, for example. A person's fingerprints is unique. The lines and shapes that pattern the fingertips are individual and belong to no one else. The grease that comes off our skin is at all times of the day, leaves a patent mark on everything we touch. We can make a copy of that mark and hopefully match it to the recorded fingerprints of known criminals. This is common knowledge and even the most simple-minded crook knows enough to wear a pair of gloves or wipe down everything he touches. But what about the traces that can't be seen, the traces that can't be wiped down? At every second or every day your body is shedding microscopic pieces of skin. Household dust is mostly made up of our dead cells. You are constantly renewing hairs. Old ones fall and new ones grow back. The clothes you wear leave behind the smallest signs of where you've been and what you've been doing. This is called DNA fingerprinting, and when gathered together, all of these things serve to build up a picture that is more conclusive than any eyewitness statement. Evidence doesn't lie when it faces a jury. Facts don't forget or get confused. Science states the case. All that is incapable. So, we read a text about the work of a criminalist and about some uh, secrets he uses to in his work. Now you are to do the test. Stop the video, reread the text and complete the test, answering the questions. Well, let's check. In the first paragraph, the writer suggests that criminals help in solving the crime. What changes have occurred recently? More criminals are being caught. Why did the writer become forensic scientist? because of a childhood role model. The writer compares crime scene to a sto story to explain how events are connected. Watching crime shows on television, viewers get the idea that solving a crime takes very little time. What does the writer not say about fingerprinting? Unwashed hands are easier to fingerprints print. The writer believes 
forensic science is a reliable method of solving crime. If you manage it without mistakes, you are great. Now, uh, sometimes uh, you have a task to make up a dialogue, and in the dialogue you are to ask questions. There are some techniques how to ask questions. When you need to ask questions based on keywords, use the 20 seconds you have to form the questions clearly in your mind. Remember that the task asks for a direct question. What time does the show start? And not an indirect question, I'd like to know, I wonder, could you tell me, and so on. You also need to interpret the prompt correctly. You don't have to repeat it. Use the correct grammar. First, question forms and forms of the verbs. Use the correct intonation. Ask one question for each prompt. And avoid irrelevant questions. Let's have a look at this new task for you. You have got an announcement. Self-Defense Academy. Martial arts classes seven days a week. First lesson is free. You are considering taking up a self-defense class and now you'd like more information. You are to ask five different questions to find out some information. Which martial arts are taught? Length of class? Availability of beginners' classes? Number of students in each class? And cost. For example, which martial arts are taught? What exactly can I try at the club? Wushu, karate, taekwondo or any other arts. Length of class. How long does each class last? You are to make up questions using these prompts. Don't repeat them. Надеюсь, поняли. Когда вы по подсказкам задаете вопросы, нельзя строить вопрос по тому, что дано здесь. What is the length of the class? Вопрос не будет засчитан, потому что вы использовали напрямую подсказку. Which martial arts are taught in the club? Не засчитывается. Вы не перефразировали подсказку. То есть подсказки нужно полностью изменить, сохранив смысл. So you try to ask questions. Устно обязательно составьте эти вопросы. Проговорите их. Let's... Oh, sorry. Now we are going to work at listening. In your book you have got some statements. I think all teenagers should do chores. I have more responsibilities because I am older. Chores take up, take up a lot of my free time. I find cleaning relaxing. I am too busy to help out much. You need to be prepared. I don't mind doing outside chores. Now you are going to listen to five speakers and your task is to decide who expresses this or that idea. Listening. I spoke to some teenagers about the household chores they have to do and how they feel about them. Here is what they told me. I live in a large house and there is lots of housework to do, so I understand that we all need to do our fair share. I think that's only right anyway. Parents do so much for their kids, so why shouldn't we help out a bit? 
There are several chores that I can't stand doing, like mopping our long staircase and washing the dishes. I'm quite happy to take the dog for a walk, though, or mow the grass for my dad. I prefer to be in the fresh air. I'm under quite a lot of pressure at school this year, and I have a lot of homework to do. But my mum still makes me help out with the chores at home. I find that quite annoying because I don't have much time left to just relax or hang out with my friends. I have the most jobs to do in the house because my sister is five years younger than me. Not only do I have to dust, tidy up, and wash the dishes after dinner, but I also have to hang out the washing. It's such a pain. I'd really like to help out more because both of my parents work. And I know they're tired when they get home, but I have so many things going on. School is more pressurised this year, and I have basketball practice three times a week too. But I try to give my mum a hand whenever I can. Spotlight on exams three. Listen Module again. Module three. And check Listening. your answers. Page sixty one. I spoke to some teenagers about the household chores they have to do, and how they feel about them. Here is what they told me. I live in a large house, and there is lots of housework to do, so I understand that we all need to do our fair share. I think that's only right, anyway. Parents do so much for their kids, so why shouldn't we help out a bit? There are several chores that I can't stand doing, like mopping our long staircase and washing the dishes. I'm quite happy to take the dog for a walk, though, or mow the grass for my dad. I prefer to be in the fresh air. I'm under quite a lot of pressure at school this year, and I have a lot of homework to do. But my mum still makes me help out with the chores at home. I find that quite annoying because I don't have much time left to just relax or hang out with my friends. I have the most jobs to do in the house because my sister is five years younger than me. Not only do I have to dust, tidy up, and wash the dishes after dinner, but I also have to hang out the washing. It's such a pain. I'd really like to help out more because both of my parents work. And I know they're tired when they get home, but I have so many things going on. School is more pressurised this year, and I have basketball practice three times a week too. But I try to give my mum a hand whenever I can. Sp well, I hope you managed, and here are the answers. Check. The first person said. I think all teenagers should do chores. It is fair. The boy said he didn't mind doing outside chores like mowing the lawn or going for a walk with his dog. The third decided that chores took up a lot of his free time. The fourth person thinks. It is unfair that she has more responsibilities because she is older. And the last, the boy is too busy to help out much, though he tries to do his best. I hope you managed with this task, and now you are to put down your homework. At home, you are to write the questions you tried to ask in your speaking. Вопросы, которые мы задавали по подсказкам, чтобы получить информацию о работе кружка, вы должны записать пять вопросов, обязательно перефразировав подсказку. That's all for today. Goodbye.